Hi guys, welcome to the class number three. For now, uh, while we wait as the class to start, as always guys, we are going to take some minutes. We are going to take 15 minutes to start the class. Welcome for those that are already waiting on the Hi class. Guys, welcome to the class. I can hear myself here. All right. So guys, uh, for those that are already joining to the class, that are already are in the chat, I created this room so we can play together while we wait for more players to join. Okay, so if you want to access, just go ahead and access. I will be here for you. And yeah, we are going to play 15 minutes, guys. So while I wait and we wait for that, I just want to know how are you? If everything is good, if, uh, as an example, you have some questions from the previous class, just let me know into the comments, okay? And yeah, let me place also the UID for this room in the comments, so you will be able to play while we wait for more players. All right, I just place it into the comments, I'm going to pin over here in the top the message with all the information. So I see that at Sanda, it's right here. Uh, welcome, Sanda. Welcome to the class. Are you going to start playing while we wait for more pliers, okay? All right, so guys, while we wait for more pliers to join, I just to let you know in this class, we are going to learn how to create the minion system and also we are going to learn how to create the wave system, okay? So, with this class, you are going to have minions that are going to spawn, and also you will have in your tower defense map. Also, you will have some um, tips for creating the, the webs, and your web system is going to work fine, okay? While we wait a little bit more for more players to join, we are playing those, this Star Wars game, um, and the room is 2769323. I'm very interested in this one. I see, so you can get like different sables here. So you can get like sword here, like a, yeah, like a gun. All right, so with these cubes, I will be, op be able to open the, the doors. Okay, right click. Welcome, cadets, dialogue one. All right. Okay, according to this, I have to find uh, some relic. Okay, oh, yeah, I see, so I need to find this, okay? All right. All right, let's see. Okay. All right, I already read all the signs, I think. Yeah, all right. So. Let's enter to the portal. And yeah. Oh, I already get attacked. All right. So guys, while I'm starting here, also let me know. Oh, okay, I don't know what I have to do. I think I need to press here. Okay. I see I found a way to kill, to make them kill themselves. Very good. All right, I can't do that much from here. We know to have to fight. Okay. I have to take cover here. All right. So guys, um. All right, let me check this. I have here something to open. Okay. Oh, okay, so I need to, to bow that, okay? Huh. Okay, there's nothing here that I can just break. Let's hit on the, oh, I don't I don't have more, more guns here. More bullets. This is a trick we are going to. It's very hard, guys. Yeah, this game is actually very hard. 
And yeah, guys, let me also play myself so you will be able to see me here in the screen. Just a moment. And on here, you will be able to see me, guys. So welcome uh, once again for those that are just joining. I'm the teacher for the minicamp. I'm the teacher for the minicamp in English. And today we are going to learn how to do some cool things with your games. Okay, so I die completely. I need to open this again. And I need to find out where I died and just recover here my items. Okay, I don't have more gun. Okay. It's very hard, guys. I'm not going to lie. It's hard because you don't have a way to cover from those specific mobs. And guys, how are you? Yeah. We are taking 15 minutes more to start the class. Okay. Here we can say that. And on here, I think we can destroy this. Let me check. No, we cannot destroy that. So it seems that we need to find a way to open this door. All right, I just going to run because if I fight, I'm going to lose. Okay, anyway, I, even I die. <laughs> Now, hi, how are you, new, new gang? Welcome to the class. All right, so if you are wondering what I'm doing, I'm just taking some time. Remember that you can join to this room if you want to play with me. Uh, we're taking just some time to, to actually start the game uh, while we wait for more players to join. Oh, I see, so let's do this. Let's play another game because I see, I just realized that you weren't able to access because this room has like the lockdown windows too much plier, so let's try another game, okay? In the meanwhile, while we wait for the game to start, while we wait also for the class to start, um, uh, let's play a, a cooperative plier game. Let's use this one, okay? We're going to place six pliers, so just see the UID on the top, you will be able to find. Actually, it's not in the top, it's in this side. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah. Uh, if you see, there is like, uh, like green letters that says UID and the room ID, so you will be able to access. I'm uh, going to open this room for all of you guys. Hopefully, this game is an actually multiplier game, but let's check that, okay? While we wait for a little bit more players to join, I also going to... Let's do this. Um, i also going to place some uh, good light here. So let's do this. I'm going to turn on the light. Okay. All right, guys. So yeah, welcome, Andy. Hi. All right. So let's start the game. All right. When you start the game, you need to select here. Uh, literally a monster that you will be able to use. I'm going to select Spartan. While we wait for more players to join. So also, Andy, if you are in the room, you can activate the voice. Um, uh, with that, you will be able to hear me inside the room, okay? Now, you can choose a, a skill or the level. We are going to check the easy one because this game is a little bit hard. So let's do that. Okay, Andy, let's move it on. So... All right, on here you can get some items. All right, so let's see what we can get here. So I already know how to pass this part. Okay, so this is going to assign us the mission to get the the to get this uh for just saving the checkpoint you need to move here so hi alejandro yes we are in the english class right now okay very good all right so now you have the yeah you can open there and there will be some mobs here
I'm going to do something, guys, and it's uh, going to reduce here the volumes for a mini word because it's too high and I'm almost not hearing you guys do this reason. So I'm going to reduce a little bit the volume for mini word and yeah, let's continue. All right, so in around five minutes more, we are going to start with the class. Hi, Kenzie, you're early now. Okay. Be careful, my friend. This is very hard to beat. Okay, yeah. Oh my god, this is... Very good! We kill him. How are you, Kenzie? Alright, so remember guys, you will be able to join to this room. Just check the UID in the top. If you stay over here, you will be able to hear be healed. Oh, okay. Be careful entering the air. Burn. Take a cover, my friend. All right, don't worry. He is going to reburn here. Take over. And we have the final boss. I think we are going to defeat this boss and then we are going to start the class. I'm going to take like... Okay, be careful with this. Oh, he kills me. Yes, we are going to try to play, okay, yes, probably we are going to, if we get enough time for this class, we will be able to play some maps after the class ends. Okay, we defeat the boss, yay, take some money, yeah, good, let's move to the next level. Yeah, get some items while I'm fighting here. In one minute more, we are going to start the class anyway. But, all right. This part is very hard. If you see, the monsters are hiding. So you are not going to see anything, but the monsters are just there, hiding behind the walls. Purple friend, there is a lot of them. Alright, one minute more to start the class. So Kenzie, tell us in the chat what you did with the monsters, what you did with the boss, so all of the players also will know what it changed in your map. God, this is very difficult. Alright. We're almost over, guys. One minute more to start the class. Okay. Yeah. I think you will be able to see the last boss, but we won't be able to play with him. We won't be able to defeat it because we are going to start the class. What this boss does is actually to spawn a lot of poison, so don't touch the poison. Also, there will be some spiders climbing on the walls. Oh, I need to move from here. I'm going to die, yeah. Okay, I'm going to die, but yeah. Oh. All right, so we get until the third level. Very good. We are very good killing this map of cruises in easy mode all 
All right, so we are going to start the class, guys. We already have 15 minutes here. And yeah, let me switch mini word and let me switch to full screen so you will be able to see me better. Let me change the screen here and now you are able to see me. So welcome guys, welcome to the class number three. In this class, we are going to learn some cool things. First, we are going to learn how to create a dominions from the beginning, how to send minions to the enemy like base or the enemy um, bunker. And then we are going to learn to create the, the like the normal system, the system for actually uh, send the waves over and over and create the different levels. OK, guys, so I see that there are some of you already connected into the comments. I just want to know how are you? I just want to know if you have some questions about the previous class. I'm reading you in the comments right now. So let me check very quickly here the comments. I see. So. I see that you were playing with me. Sorry uh, that I stopped the like the level in the half, but we need to start a class. But welcome. Did you prefer to call or do you prefer me to call you Andy or uh, never mind? I, I'm not very good at Vietnamese, so I'm not able to pronounce your name very well. It's I think it's Nguyen, but I prefer to use Andy. OK, so yeah, Andy, it, that was actually very good, GG. We will be able to beat two bosses very quickly, so that was fast. Most of the times we take a lot of time to beat some bosses. But well, it seems that you already have some experience playing this game, so I really like that, okay? So guys, uh, continue with the class, continue with the part with that we left. Um, remember, in the last class we learned some cool things, but we left some parts that are going to be very important. Right now we know how to put uh, the towers, how to create the towers around some area. Now we are going to start with the scripting and with the triggers, okay? Most of the class is going to be around triggers. Of course, we are going to learn also some cool things for creating those mobs. But uh, for this class, I just want to, or I just want you to know that we are going to take a lot of time to learn triggers, okay? So let's move to the presentation. If you realize uh, when I move in this way, it is not like I'm uh, Checking on other things, what happens is that I get the new monitor and I have my monitor here. So here I can control the class. Here in this one, I can play with you and here I can talk to the camera. So probably yesterday you were confusing because I was like talking in different ways, but don't worry for that. It's okay. And so let me start with the class. I'm going to switch the presentation. Now that's cool. Now you will be able to see the presentation. Okay, guys. And to moving back to the presentation. We are going to do this. I need to give you some reminders, guys. So very cool, guys. Remember, um, again, remember that we have some time. We have some specific dates for participate. For those that are new, remember that just for participating in the event, to win the event, you need to assist to the live class or you need to check the videos that are going to be submitted after some days with all the resume for this. After that, a starting around the 2nd of July until the 12th of July and the very important the, the time for submit your map is Chinese time so be sure that you submit your map before the 12th of July but you will be able or you will have the option to submit the map starting on the 2nd of July okay and finally we are going to review your maps according to that we are going to to just define which one are going to be the winners okay as always we have some prizes in real money we have $40 for excellent award. Yeah, I think you already know what it is, but uh, excellent award is the best work. The work that uh, the map that worked the best that, that that doesn't have like that much books and that is more enjoyable. Then we have the best learning that actually is the one that implements more all the features inside the map. Then we have the most creative award that is the map that is stunning. Probably it's not the best playing, but it has some cool features, something that is not common. As an example, I don't know, at Mutan, uh, tower defense, a space tower defense, I don't know. Um, in this part is when you have to surprise the, the other teachers and me. Finally, we have the best progress award, that is the, the actual the developer in level one or not developer players that are, are actually making a good map. And finally, we have the shortlist. As always, all of you will be able to participate in the shortlist. If you create a tower defense map that is playable, I will give you the short release hour that is going to be a skin, okay? As always, take a screenshot of the deadline. 
the submit time that this is the most important for you guys it's going to be the 12th of july be remember this is chinese time so you need to submit before 10 5 9 okay now for this class what we are going to learn first we're going to do a small recap because i think the class class was a little bit difficult so i just want to do a quick recap don't worry it's not going to take that time I just want to clarify some specific things. Then oh, we are going to start with TD scripts. I'm going to give you some scripts that you just need to copy and paste into your map. And with that, you are going to have everything ready to uh, set up some specific features, like as an example, soul towers, auto attack the mobs or the minions, and a lot of things that you will need, okay? After that, we are going to start creating the minions. The minions is not that much complicated as towers because you see in the last class, the towers were a little bit more complicated. And uh, then we are going to learn how to buy and get the minions working on the system so you can get some minions that are going to attack the enemy base. Then we are going to start creating the TD system and if we left some time I'm going to review some maps and as always guys as you know after the class we, we start playing some maps okay. Let me read you in the comments very quickly. And yeah guys just for you guys that are the actually the guys that actually always come here uh, very early that are not the people that get late into the class remember that the last class we left some codes i forgot to send you those codes well i'm going to start giving you those codes right now so you will be able to exchange those items okay so let me change here let me move on my sides and i'm going to get some codes for you okay so guys be ready get ready to exchange those codes Remember, uh, those codes are going to be 15 mini bins and also some skin shards. So I'm just getting those codes for you. Give me a second here. Let's hit here. Just a moment, guys. I'm just getting in this screen the codes. All right, I already go in the codes here. So the first one is going to be for 15 mini bins. Okay, so it's remember to go to the to mini world and claim um, claim your mini bins. And second one is going to be ten skin cards. And uh, then we are going to paste this. Remember that this is something that I forgot to send you the last class. So that's like uh, something that you can get. Okay, guys. For those that didn't remember, let me change the screen here also. And let me show you in mini word how you can climb those uh, specific um, coins, okay? For doing this, what you have to do is that you need to hit over here. If you have the new interface, you will have this um, like gift icon in some part because I didn't uh, have the, like, the new interface. I think it's when you hit uh, like your player, you will be able to see that. But you are going to hit that and you are going to get this menu. Remember that this menu is also always open uh, when you just restart a mini word. And under you are going to search in events and then activation code. And you are going to paste here the code that you have. Just hit on activate and with that you are going to get those climbs. Okay. Um, guys, take your time to climb your codes and let's move to the presentation back. All right. So now you are in the presentation again. And as you are able to see me again, what I need you to do, guys, is to take some time because we are going to start with the class. As always, apart from the codes that I just sent it to you, we have more codes here that are going to be sent it at the end of the class. So, guys, if I forgot to send you those codes, just remind me. Remember that uh, those codes are going to be for you. And depending on the amount of, of views, we are going to be able to, to get some extra rewards, okay? First, we are going to give again 15 mini pins, also some skin cards. But if we get more than 50 views, we will be able to provide you a skin. Okay. Now, for those that didn't know, uh, we have a, actually a mini camp map or a mini camp Discord, in which you can have some help, in which one you can get some extra help. So remember, guys, if you want to have that information, if you just want to to like uh, get on into this channel, just access to the channel, okay? Now, remember for this class, you will need a computer and also you need to take or have something to take note with, okay? So let's start uh, to recap or to find out what was uh, the last 
class, remember that in the last class we create a combat system, okay? Just to remind you, we learned how to create the basis for the game, uh, how to gain the 10 lives, how to, to get the life or the minions lose life, how to deal with the upgrades, how to create the minion base and the towers, like the base for the towers, okay? We learned how to create the damage, how to increase the damage per level, we create a fire tower. So now, for this class, we are going to focus in the minions, okay guys? So, just to remind you what are going to do the minions. The minions, in this case, are going to have some specific features that we need to do or to create, okay? The first thing is that our minions are going to have a base life. Uh, the scale is going to be in 10. That means that the minion is going to start with 10 of life. You can set up whatever, but remember, um, don't use one number as a, as a life, as an example, one of life, because when the tower damage, and you can want to like graduate the damage, and you have, as an example, the, the base that one, you want to do 1.5 of damage, that won't be possible. So always set up your minion as 20 or 10 at as minimum. Don't use like very high values because it's going to be confusing for the players. Speed pace is going to be 200. That is going to be the normal speed, the most accurate one for this kind of games. With this, your mobs are not going to be too fast. Uh, so the players are going to have enough time to, to kill the players with the towers. But also they are not going to be extremely slow, that is also frustrating, okay? It's going to feel good with that speed. Um, the coins, the reward is going to be one coin for each 20 of life. You don't have to worry for that, the system is going to do that automatically. And the price for selling those mobs is going to be three. Also, you need to define the level and the class of your minion, okay? But moving forward, for creating your minions, what you have to do is that you have to do uh, basically those objects. As you see, um, for actually creating and the, the like the, the tower, it was a little bit difficult because our mob used to have First to create a mob, second to create a projectile, then a buff for the projectile, and then the misitem and the craft recipe. So we learned how to create that part. Also, we learned some basic triggers. So first we learned the system to the player starts, in which actually we learned how to create the teams. So it was a red team and a blue team. Also, we create a place tower system that was you can have all the towers, but what, what actually is going to place the towers is the one that says place oak or place fail. Okay? That was just for the recap. Now, for the actual system that we are going to learn in starting the class right now, before starting with your mobs, before starting with everything, I want to show you how you can add some specific scripts to your system, okay, guys? So, to this, I'm going to, to switch again to the main screen, and we need to actually open the script system, okay, guys? So, I'm going to move to this screen now, and now I'm going to give you some specific um, like tricks for this. Let me switch to mini word. Yes, now you can see the screen full. And what we are going to do is that we are going to have here. Give me a second. We are going to have a here a website. Okay. I'm going to copy this website for you guys into the comments, so you will be able to find out those scripts. Okay. So. Please remember, this script is also into the comments, okay? All right, so, guys, um, here, please go ahead and open that link. The link that you are going to find here is uh, the actual link that you can... Um, used to open the scripts, okay? Remember, also, this link, guys, is going to be in the description for the video. So, if you want to check the video back anytime or the resume, you are going to find that link. Also, it's in the Discord channel in the part that says resource. But actually, it's going to be... Um, it's going to be the... under... Okay, so let me check. I see. So... This is going to be different for some reason, huh? Yes, let me change the name. I see. I didn't realize that. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so 
I already changed it. So check now the stream is changed. I don't know what happened. What happened, guys, is that I give the Spanish clash and the English clash, but for some reason it seems that my YouTube freak out. But don't worry. Um, yeah, I already changed it. I hope with this is going to work better. That now, yeah, continue with the script, guys. So open um, the link that I send you into the description or the Yes, that I send you into the chat, and you are going to see this, guys. You are going to see this new screen that says Jeju Core Art and Jeju Scripts, okay? Normal questions that people ask me first. Um, uh, if um, this actually... Uh, if this uh, system will be able to replace it into Scripts too. And yeah, you will be able to do it with the Scripts, but not with Triggers uh, also important things uh you can use your cell phone but it's going to be a little bit more complicated to use okay so be sure that in your cell phone you are going to if you are using your cell phone or a tablet you are going to be able to copy the same things that i'm going to copy okay so check this screen right now guys you are seeing my screen and what i'm going to do is i'm going to select a specific topic from those that you are going to see when you open the link okay now I'm going to increase the size here. All right, and now what I'm going to do is that you are going to search on this bar right here. You are going to search for this one, the one that says store block, okay guys? And what is going to do a store block for you guys uh, to understand is going to create the menu that you see in my game that you can open the store with your system. So. Be sure that you are going to copy, check this, you have all this code here. You need to be sure that you are going to copy everything, okay guys? When I mean everything, be sure that you are not going to co copy the interface here. What you are going to do is that you are going to copy just starting from here, from these um, like dashes, until the end. So remember, the first dash, or a lot of, there's going to be a lot of dashes in the top. And at the end, you are going to have like this specific part at the end that says open mob store. Okay, so once you copy everything, what you are going to do is just to paste it into MiniWord. So we are going to start the map. Okay, guys, when we are going to start the map, that is going to be the map that we are working currently. Okay. So you are going to start the map that you are creating. And very important, guys, in this part, you need to do exactly the same that I'm going to do. Okay? So what you're going to do is that you are going to hit Developer Tools right here in the top. You see, over here. And in Developer Tools, you are going to select Scripts. Okay? You are going to create a new script set. Rename it as a system or whatever name you want to give it, but important, give it a name so you know what it's going to do. You're going to create a new script. When you create a new script, you're going to see those like uh, green letters around the area. Just delete those letters and paste right here the code that we sent. So you will be able to paste it just by hitting uh, paste, okay? Yeah, this is scripts. What is going to do? Uh, you can see it's actually going to open the source. You see in my game when you hit uh, the like the layout um, table, it's going to open the menu for creating the towers. So you will have all the time with the menu in your hand. Probably you are going to get here, and it's very important. As you see right here, you are going to get an X. Probably I get the X all the time here. If you see an X, a red part here. Just delete all that line, okay? When you delete that line, your script is going to be perfect. So, what you need to know, and let me copy this script. I'm going to open this script in another program here. Because uh, due to the mini world limitations, I cannot zoom in. But with this program, I will be able to. Just remember, it's the same script that you are seeing in the screen. But I'm going to use this as this specific system to be able to increase the size, okay? So guys, as you see, it's the same script. 
what I want to show you is that most of the times you are going to get the error on this line that is going to be a limit playable, blah, 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 blah. You need to delete that line or just put two dashes on it and you are going to see that it's going to work fine. But more important, guys, if you scroll down, you are going to set or see a part that says a setup, okay? Setup is the option where you are going to set up all the scripts for this. So let me increase the size so you will be able to see better like the, like the text on it, okay? So there's going to be inside setup right here. You're going to see a part that says store toolbox item, okay? And what did you need to do that? that are going to be or are going to have a number as you see each one of those three values that's the only part that you need to set up okay so a store pool a store toolbox item is going to be the id of the item that you are going to use to open the store remember the last class we or the class number two we create the money we create the operate coin and also the item that allows you to open the store so what you have to do is to copy that id here how you're going to do that okay in many words you are going to just delete the number that is in just in front of the part that says store toolbox item, okay? When you delete that number on here, on the top, just under the yellow icons or the bin icon, the open folder icon and the save icon, there's going to be like default, uh, like different screens or shots or buttons. You are going to have one that says ID library. We're going to hit on the ID library and once you are in ID library, you are going to search for the one that says item in the scroll down menu that you are going to see. Okay, so when you hit item, it's going to open this menu. This menu has all the items in menu word. Okay, guys, so very important. If you create the item that I mentioned before, your item is going to be in custom and you are going to see it is the weapon shot or in this case is going to be the tower shop. You just hit on that one and it's going to put a number in the area that you were having the mouse. Also, if you notice this, when you place the mouse over the, the item, it's going to have like the information, it's going to show you something that says ID, that is going to be the number, the existing number, or like the social security number or the identification for this item, okay? So you need to place that number here, all right? In my case, it's going to be 4106, you will have a different number probably. And with that, your item store is going to be safe. So let me show you the example here. Okay, guys. So if I, what I did right now was just to disactivate this script. Okay, I'm going to render to the game. So you will be able to see the difference. And what I did actually basically is just to disactivate that option, okay? So you will see the difference. Our game is going to take some time to start. All right, guys. So if if I I use this specific item, the one that I have in my hand, that is the item that opened the store item, all right? But right now I cannot open anything because the trigger is not activated. Now, now if I activate the script back, the one that we just created, and I'm going to rename it as a store system. Let's say tower store system, okay? And now I play it. First, you are going to get that menu when the map starts. And second, with this script, when you open or use this item, the item that you place, this menu is going to be open. So that was the first part, guys. As you see, it's very easy to set up. Then you are going to place a move inside the game that also allows you to open the search. So if you see here, and I talk to this uh, this uh, move, I will be able to to open the like the like the menu for the towers. Okay. So what you are going to do for that, you are going to just open the same script and below that, there is an option here that says store toolbox mob, okay? So in the three options that we get before, and let me switch to this screen, the second option in setup says store toolbox mob and the item is six. So if you change that number, you need to do the same. If you are going to delete the number here, and in the ID library, you are going to select a creature instead of item. And once again, you are going to have all the creatures inside MiniWord. 
you are going to select custom and you are going to select your store. So when you select your store right here, you are going to see that the item or the mob, it's going to have um, that number on there. And finally, if you get one that says stay a store develop item, uh, that is going to open the developer store. If you don't have it, just place minus one or one. And that's going to auto ignore that. OK, so now when you are in play mode, you will be able to have all this uh, menu open. So remember, you only need to copy that script. OK, now we are going to do another thing, guys, and it's that we are going to actually import another system. This system is going to be the tower system. So once again, create a new script in the same menu. You are going to delete everything. Oh, hi, Rosen. Welcome. OK, and now what you are going to do is that you are going to delete everything as always with the trash icon, the bin trash or the yeah, trash bin or recycle can icon. Now that you have everything deleted, you are going to access to the same web by going to just copy and paste again the website here. OK. So once again, I'm going to paste this into the comments. And now that you have copied or opened this, you are going to open again another one of the scripts. The scripts is tower system. OK, guys, for those that are or as can see, are going to ask what is going to do. This one is going to do a lot of things. First, it's going to add the, the, the buff that allows your towers to attack the mobs to auto attack. So you don't have to worry for adding like a lot of um, AI, AI, AI in your mobs just by having this at uh, the towers are out, out to aim your mobs. Very important. Then remember the towers needs to be created in base of the roaster, the yellow chicken. But uh, this system is just going to first out to aim for your towers. Second, when your mob dies, it's going to provide uh, like the reward based it on the life of the mob. So as an example, if your mob has uh, 20 of life, it's going to give one coin. If it has 40 of life, it's going to give two coins. That's going to be based in the life. Third is going to provide you the availability or the skill to sell the tower just by hitting the right click. And third one, you can add another function that will be um, use any item to attack that is going to only damage mobs. It's not going to damage towers or flyers. And most important one is also going to provide you an auto heal. That means that your players are not going to have hunger inside your game. Okay. So as you see, it's like a lot of small functions that are going to complete your sword system. Uh, so remember again, you need to copy this. Uh, be sure that you are not going to copy like this part that says 100 lines or and other parts, just copy the code. So remember, the code is going to start with these lines. You only need to copy everything from the top to the to the to the end. Remember, here in the end, it's going to say auto heal hunger, and then it's going to have like the bracket, the end bracket. Just copy everything from the top. Be sure that everything is copy uh, because if you left one symbol, one uh, part, it's not going to work. Just copy. Probably in your, if you're in cell phone or, or in a computer, you are going to see another couple of functions before that. Don't copy that. Be sure that the only part that is copied is the code and be sure that you are seeing all the code. OK, now that you copy this, once again, you are going to into mini word and you are going to paste that. OK, once more, it's going to give you an error here. It's going to have a red like uh, X. The only thing that you need to do is to just delete that line. OK, guys. So when you delete that line, probably it's going to give you another error. See, so if it's giving you any error, just delete that line. But very important in the part where it says setup, you are going to have, as always, the setup options. So let me copy this and let me just transfer to this software that allows me to. To actually um, do a like a zoom in and zoom out inside the code, guys. And very important, guys, this is what you are going to see. As always, as I mentioned before, if you get some X, some errors, just delete that line. What you are going to do is, if you see here at the beginning, we have right here the option that says setup. OK, guys, that's very important. You are going to look for setup. 
and in setup you will have some specific features on here you are going to have three different items okay first one says item money second one says item tower upgrade and third one says oh, hey, upgrade drop chain so item money it's very easy guys it's just going to be the the item that we create for your money your coins so you need to place the number of the coins here item tower upgrade is going to be the number for the upgrade coins remember that we create also and up, upgrade drop chance is the like the the chance to get uh, some um as an example upgrade coins okay my space advice this one leave it in in 90 that means that only from uh it's not going to ignore uh, from 100 mobs it's going to ignore 10 of them and it's it's going to be like a balanced way okay so once more, once you copy, pass into mini word, if you get your items, just delete the number of the money that says eat and money, hit on ID library on the top, on the drop menu, select item, then you need to search for your coins and just select the item, the coins, and you are going to insert it. For the upgrade coin, you are going to do the same, you are going to delete the number, you are going to select again ID library, you are going to select item from the drop menu, you are going to select custom, and on here you are going to select the upgrade coin. And that's it, you are going to save it. And now your system has all the features for the tower system to work. Okay, now the towers should be able to, to work fine, that's the last part. On here you can rename it as tower system. And that's it. Those are the only two scripts that we need for this class. Now the system is going to work fine. It's going to how to sell the towers. It's going to, to do all the features that I explained before, guys. Okay? Just for you to know. Now, what we are going to do, I already have those here, as you see. It's the one that says auto attack, is the same script that we just copy and paste. Okay. Now I'm going to to change this, I'm going to take those two out because we already have it here and also the stores. Now, guys, now that we already finished this part, I want to know if you have some questions in the comments about this topic. Because now I know that in the English class we have a lot, a lot of developers that are actually advanced. So I really like that. But if you have some questions, because I know that you like to experiment, just let me know into the comments. Okay, guys? So now that we have already that part covered, so that we our our mobs are working fine, um, and we have the towers working fine, we are going to start with the mobs. Okay, guys. So to create the mobs and to to change this, uh, we are going to just move into the next part of the presentation, and it's guys that we are going to create the mobs. Okay. So as always, I want to show you a real example about it. So we are going to create a minion, okay? So, can see you are you are the good creating some ideas. So just give me an idea of a move that you want to create. So as an example, you want to create a move that is fast. You want to create a move that can fly. Whatever, hey, we are going to create a move, okay? So to start in this, let's do this. We are going to create a minion that is going to be. All right, we are going to create a minion that is going to explode when it dies, okay? And that's very important. So for this, we are going to to create that mob. But why? Because it's we're going. To, I think it's going to be very cool because with this we can like um, add a new feature into the into the map. Remember that we already have a mover here. So let's do this. Remember, guys, that I told you that the life is going to be 20. That's going to base be the base for this mob. So in our case, our as our minion is going to explode, um, we are going to give a level and a class. So the class is going to be explosive. Then the levels are going to be one number two and number three okay we are only going to create two levels actually for the class we are going to create just one but for you to know guys we are going to imagine that your mob is going to have three different levels okay 
All right, so the life phase and multiply times for my mocks is for the basic mock, it is going to be 20. In this case, we are going to start with a new mock, so the life is going to be a little bit higher because you want not to the mock to die immediately. We want uh, this mock to to die in the way. So as an example, the players are going to take this as a bonus, so the mob is going to move around. And when it is at least in the health of the way, it's going to explode. So we are going to give much, much more life. So remember the basic tower in my game is making 10 of damage. That means that we can calculate how much damage is going to get this mob uh, before it explodes, okay? So we are going to give at least, um, I don't know, let's give 80 of life, that means that it's going to receive 8 hits before it explodes. And it's going to, to yeah, a baby boomer could be could be very fine. <laughs> like we can make an old, an old move that can say, oh, in my time that wasn't working like that, and it's going to be a baby boomer. Okay, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, the boomer is going to to, to explode. Um, yeah, I, I actually like the name, okay? It's going to be a lot, kind of funny. For those that didn't know, Baby Boomer is like the old generation, uh, the people that has more than 60, 65 years right now, that is going to be a Baby Boomer. So it's going to be a little bit uh, funny to, to put the name. Actually, I like it. You're very creative, guys. So let's say it's Minions Baby Boomer. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's that's going to be kind of funny. Um, so the life is going to be 80 of the first level. We're going to give, uh, give two shots more for the second level. And for the third level, we are going to give another two uh, like um, shots. Okay, very important guys, as you see, I'm only increasing like the base life in a little bit, not uh, like duplicating it because it's going to be very unbalanced. Do you remember that it needs to be progressive, okay? So the speed base, it's going to be 200. We are not going to play with that. Remember to not to change all the features per level, just one or two, because we don't want uh, like the like the, the mobs be too OP. For the bobs here, it's going to be explosion. And what it's going to do is going to change the damage. So the first level is going to do 220 of damage. The second level, it's going to do 40 of damage. And no, I remember I say that don't increase that much. So the second level is going to do 30 of damage and the third level is going to do 40 or damage, okay? Very important, guys. That is the ideal part, but for this class, for this example, as we are not going to take that much longer time, I won't be able to, to create this because for, the, for doing an exact damage, we will need to do an artificial explosion system. You know, mini explosion system doesn't allow to set up very well those parts. So I won't be able to change that, okay? But we are going to do, this is the ideal part. The actual part that we are going to do for this class, as we don't have that much time, is that is going to be uh, constant that much, okay? It's going to be the same damage. The only difference is that it's going to, to resist a little bit more. Okay, so the coin reward is going to be according to the life. So in the first, in the eighth level, it's going to be, remember, for each um, 20 of life, it's going to give us one coin. So it's going to give us four coins. In the 100, it's going to give us five coins. And in the third level, that is going to be the last one, is going to give us six coins, okay? That will be the difference for killing. Now, for the pricing, my basic mob is half a price of three. That is going to be the level one. As this one is a special mob that has uh, like four times the life that the normal one has, we are going to place um, a lot of price, okay? So four times the price is going to be 12. Now the next level is going to have five times the life, so it's going to be uh, five times, three for five is going to be 15, and the last one is going to have six times the life, so three uh, multiplied by six, it's going to be 18, sorry, yeah, that's going to be the price for this mob, okay guys? So let's start and let's move to Miniword, we are going to start designing this mob, and very important guys, you can see it here that we can set up like the basics. Now 
we are going to change or create the minion like that. So this minion is going to require some objects. First object that we required is the mob, actually. It can be based on any animal. It's not like the towers that you need to use the roster. You can use whatever animal you want. If we get a buff, in this case, we need to create explosion. So that's very important, guys. Uh, in this case, as it's an explosion, we are going to create it by triggers. We are going to have a miss item, like an item that doesn't do anything, that actually is just like a dummy. It's going to detect that you that you acquired that item and it's going to create a off. And finally, it's going to require a store that sells the items, okay? So, for this, we are going to start to create in the mob. Let me change the screen here. <laughs> hello, hello, Jesus. Welcome, Jesus Villanueva. Welcome to the class. All right, guys, let me change the screen here. Just a moment. I'm changing the screen. Yeah, right now, you should be able to see my mini word, okay? So we are going to live here. And we are going to start creating our mob. As always, I'm going to use the same map. I like you guys to to see the, that we use the same map, so you will be able to notice that it works. First, we are going to add a new mob. As you see, you are going to hit a completely new. Remember, create and an existing creature. You can use whatever creature you want as a base. Very important, guys. Try to use animals, don't use monsters, because most of the monsters are going to have their own UID, or sorry, UID, or your, their own in the artificial intelligence. We don't want that. We don't want like a move that is going to shoot the towers or the flyers. So that's why we are going to use animals, okay? Um, as an example, I always use uh, the chicken, but you can use whatever animal you want, okay? So let's use the... As we are using the roaster, let's use the squawker for this. The squawker, you are going to change the name for our, our mob. So remember, it's going to be baby boomer level one. Okay. Remember, always place the level here. Suppliers will know that. Okay. So first, we are going to change the model. Remember, you can choose whatever model you have. In my game, I already have Rocky, Frosty, and the different levels. So we need to search um, an actual mob that we are not using. So I think this one is going to work fine. So it's a baby boomer. This one looks old and looks like that it can explode, okay? Also remember, some of you, like Ken, like Ken C, is already creating some awesome maps. So welcome, Diogo. Uh, so he already creates some awesome mobs uh, by itself, by like miniature livery. Remember that if you want that, you also have some mobs that you can download, like this one, or you can create your own mobs uh, for the game, or you can use the base one. So that's on you guys. The only thing that I recommend you, if you download like mobs, be sure that they're, those mobs are not going to be like very heavy or they're going to take a lot of memory to load because that can damage your game, that can make the players take a long time to load your map. So once uh, you have the like the mob here, you can set up the size. If it's a, I, I will recommend you this, guys. So if the mob is level 1, choose 7. If the mob is level 2, choose 9. If the mob is level 3, it's going to be 1.1, and like that, if you have more levels, increase the size. So the players will know this also for the size, for the size that the mob is going to be more powerful, okay? So for this one, we are going to choose just 8 or 9, okay? And what we are going to do, guys, um, we are going to actually go to attributes. For the creature type, type you are going to select monsters. Uh, sorry, animals. With animals, you are going to be sure that your mob is not going to disappear, okay? Remember the hilt, we are going to save it at the amount that we set. In, remember in the table, the first level is going to have 80 of life. So let's change the life right here, okay guys? Check this, we are going to left 80. For the attack, remember that our mob is not going to be half attack. Mobable, of course, you have to be mobile. But I'm very sure, guys, when it's movable, you are going to hit here when it says edit, and you are going to take out of all the different options that it has here, okay? 
very important, the speed, remember the speed is going to be 200. That's the recommended amount. You can have also some mobs that are going to be slower or faster, but don't overuse this. Don't get more than 300 or don't get less than 150. Now, everything else needs to be completely off. Okay, even the drop part, our system is going to auto drop the items, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, for battle, in the battle tab, we are going to keep group as a default. The range, we are going to, to keep in zero, but very important, guys, the view field is going to be 24, okay? Attack, it needs to be completely off. In advanced, you are going to delete all the options that you have, okay? So remember, you are going to switch to advanced and delete everything, okay? All right, so once you delete everything, you are going to have your mob here. And that's it, guys. We have already our first mob, our baby boomer, okay, guys? It's right here. As always, guys, just to remind you, when you create a mob, what you need to do when you add it into your map is be sure to change anything. Then go ahead and switch the back that option to the normal. Why? Because sometimes mini work change the option, so probably you are going to set up the map and when you do a change in your baby boomer, it's going to change the ID, the op like the identification for the move. So probably in your triggers or your scripts, it's going to have a different number then and it's going to give you some errors. So pro tip, as always, when you add a move, take some time to edit it and re-save it. Now, if we move back to the presentation, we left some parts, okay? We already have the mob here. Now we need to create the mob, the miss item and the store. So I'm going to leave the buff for the end uh, because this is going to take a little bit of time, but we are going to create the miss item and the store, okay? So for creating the mob here, we are going to go to mobs, to props, and we are going to create the, the miss item, okay? This item is not going to do anything. It's just going to be the mob number. So just hit create, create a new one, and when you create a new one, you are going to select the option that says MISC, that is going to be like the fire icon. On there, you have to place the information about your mob. First, we are going to give a name, baby. Boomer, that is going to be the, the name that we set up for your mob. Then, uh, we are going to set up a description for it. Very important, guys, if you can place the level for it. Remember that the players are going to know this, which level is your mob. So as an example, I hit here, it's going to be level one. All right. Now the description needs to have some information about your mob. So let's place first, the important thing is the life. So the mobs are going to know, the players are going to know how much life has your mob. That is going to be 80. Now the speed, because that is going to be another important value when they call the mobs and they take decisions is going to be 200 and finally the buff or the effect or the skill that the mob has okay let's place it like it's a skill so it's going to be easier to understand for the players as you notice i didn't use that much like text i prefer to be consist uh, because in many words the players doesn't read and it's going to be a very easier or it's going to be easier for you to, to understand when you don't have a lacked option okay so for skills we are going to say explodes in area when dies okay that's simple you remember you can give colors to this so if you hit on a like pound icon and the letter g in the uppercase is going to have green color if you use hashtag or pound icon or a symbol and the letter red is going to have the the letter r sorry is going to have a red color and finally, if you hit the pound icon and the letter Y in, in uppercase is going to give the yellow color to the text, okay? So we have now the name, we have the statistics. Now we are going to choose uh, like the icon for it. Remember guys, I'm going to place any icon because this is just a class. For you guys, you are going to place the right icons here. You are going to place the icons that you want to place for this mob. Uh, you can use also your custom miniature system. Now we are going to move to attribute and you are going to keep this like a max amount of number that you have and then the skills and everything else you are going to keep it like it is. You are not going to do any change. We are going to add a this move to your system. So it's going to be right here. And right now we have like the face for this the miss item. Okay, 
So if we move back to the presentation, guys, we left also the store, okay? So very important, guys, uh, probably you already know that uh, because I have teach you this a lot of times. For those that uh, didn't know that, uh, what you are going to do is that you have to create a mob. When you create the mob, like the one that I have here, that is going to be the trainer, it's the one that, that actually sends the mobs. This trainer is going to have here like different options. On interaction, you can add the store, okay? So just hit create new shop. Just give the shop name. Let's say defense or attack minion or a special minion. If you want to give like a specific name to the shop for information, What you are going to do is to move to product setup and you're going to add, once again, the minion that we just create. Okay, so it's going to be this one. It's one that's the one that says baby boomer. We're going to have here some options. You hit on edit options and we have the next options here, okay? So we have purchase with the stars. You don't need that. Purchase token, you are going to delete everything and you are going to add your coins. So remember, we set up a price for this one. It was... At the beginning, it was 12, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, it was the price for that one. The quantity, we are going to, to set by one. This one needs to be completely off. The remaining purchase, guys, you need to limit this. So if you place a lot of the purchase, the, the players will be able to spawn a lot of mobs at the same time, and that's not going to work fine, okay? Now, you, there is an option that says replacement you are going to turn on that one and you are going to set that the replacement is going to be 60 seconds so players will be able to buy this a uh, like muff if every 60 seconds okay very important guys if you don't hit replacement once the player uh, use five mobs you are not going to have those mobs anymore to to available fruit stores so be sure that replacement is on just save save and return and enter to your game right now you will be able to get the mob okay so let's see here if i hit right now to this store that is the one that sells the minions i have a special minions here and i have my baby boomer and i can get it for 60 bucks of course i don't have money in this game right now but it's just to show you okay guys so now uh, the minion actually doesn't explode. For this, we need to to do a specific uh, like trigger. Okay, I think we have enough time, so I'm going to do that trigger for you guys. How you can create an explosion in Miniword. So if you want to do like a system that makes explosions, I'm going to show you a quick way to do it. Okay, so oh okay, I see I see what you mean. You are not able to see my screen. Okay. Yeah, guys, now you are able to see my screen, so let me show you. You are going to create a store. When you create a store, you are going to add this, the special items here, okay? So just to, to let you check again how it works, let me show you here. What you did is basically create another mob. The mob needs to be half service speed and needs to have a lot of life. That's the basics. It needs to not attack or do anything more than stay under. And if you scroll down to, to interaction, you will be able to add the stores here. So you are going to create a new store. You give the store the name, you get the information. And here where it says product setup, you add this, the products. You need to select the product that you are going to create. You already create the mob, so select here. Select an edit, and on here you can set up everything. Important things, guys, on here you are going to place the coin icon. On here, you need to limit the remaining purchase to five or whatever number you want. But very important, the replacement needs to be on. And my advice is to keep it on 60, okay? That means every 60 seconds, it's going to, to just a, a create a new existence for this one, okay? Now, once you complete that, you're going to see that your name is here. Just saved, you're restored, and you will be able to play in the game, okay? So now, 
we left now to create a, the, like this specific um, like the like this um, like this new system okay so remember that we are going to do the quick explosion system guys okay so this is some trick that they learn with a lot of time to create a simple explosion in mini world just create a new item here in a new prop in the item you are going to select ammo trigger we are going to select here the name and says quick explosion Uh, select any model for it. Uh, of course, um, whatever you want to to select here is going to work. But if you select this one, it's going to look more like an explosion. For the attribute, uh, select uh, max number is going to be whatever number. Be sure that throw wall is on. On here it says no charge. Throw interval set up for the minimum. And here you are going to hit the radius for the explosion. Very important, guys. Projectile attack is going to be the radius. So let's say one. One is going to be the explosion that is going to be one at one side. Two, it's going to be too much. Probably we are going to damage our towers. Very important to make the explosion here. So select explosion. Gravity, select the max amount. Initial speed, select the normal amount. And on here, guys, how you are going to create out explosion? Just select here. Where it says creature and blocks and selects trigger immediately. Okay. Now uh, you are going to hit and receivable and receivable off, and you are going to save, and you are going to add to the system. So with this item, you will be able to create explosion. The only thing that you need to do is to create the projectile in any part. So let's move ahead and now let's set up the like the life for this minion. Okay. So what you are going to do here is that we are going to go to triggers on triggers you are going to create a new trigger set and says uh, special skits or whatever name you want to give for mobs and event the event is you are going to select a new event the creature when he's completely defeated the condition is going to be creature and determine creature type. In creature type, you're going to select your creature that is going to be the one that we just create. So in custom, select your baby boomer. Yes, actually I have um, this job that is the one that you're checking right now. I'm teacher on the minicamp. And also I'm um, like bring support to mini word uh, special teams we have some teams that develop maps and I bring support to them those are my two jobs and yep yeah, that actually are I'd get paid for for showing you guys how to how to create maps okay so finally here we are going to create a missile here so create a projectile you are going to hit here Create a projectile. The projectile type, you are going to select the system that we made that is going to be the quick explosion, guys. And the location is going to be the bend position, okay? And that's it. With this, our baby boomer is going to explode. Let me, sh when it dies. So let me show you here. We are going to place our baby boomer spawner here. Oh, uh, let me see here in developer. We should have our baby boomer around this area. Baby boomer is here. And also I go into to place some towers here. Yeah, because probably let's let's do this. I'm going to give a lot of money. Like 99 of money. Like a lot of a lot, a lot of money, okay? So with this, I will be able to show you that the minion explodes very quickly. So um, let's put some cool towers here. Now I have 18 towers, so let's place the towers here. Okay. All right. Very good. Nice. Better. Cool. We have a lot of towers right here, okay? 
So we're going to place our baby boomer here. The baby boomer is going to start moving. Okay, that probably can happen, don't worry. If that happens to you, you need only to, to get them up closer. And it's almost dying. One shot more and it's going to die. As you see, the mob creates explosion. So that's how you create explosions in Mini World, guys, very quickly. So, now that you see how we can create a dose explosion, don't worry, can see I'm going to teach you that in the end of the class, because I'm going to teach you at the end of the class how to change icons again, and how to create those 99, a lot of um, number, whatever a number you want to have as coins, okay? So, it, that's what's the example about the minion. Now, moving back to the presentation, we, this minion is not doing anything yet, right? So it's it's actually being created, but it's not going to, to do anything. Now we are going to build the minion system. And to make this minion be able to spawn in your team, we have to create some triggers, guys. And your favorite part, we are going to learn to create those triggers. So for this, we are going to have the next thing. First, we are going to have two different trigger sets. The first one is going to be player start. That is going to do is to going to set up all the features for the player before the map start. Then we are going to have the Pui Minion item or the Pui Minion system. And what is going to do? Let me start first with this one, the player start. The player start is very easy, guys. We are going to have two triggers, one for the team one, one for the team two. We already learned how to create that one. But for this very important, we are going to have the different things. For be able to create this system, you have to have a spawn minion area that is going to be a variable, a pre-made variable. You have to have an area and also a path system, okay? So let's start with the easiest one. It's the, going to be the path system. So how it works, the path system, guys? If you realize, in my way, there's going to be this specific signs, okay? And I'm going to move to our map, the map that we were creating before, just to show you all the different things. So let me show you here. In many words, we are going to access to the map that we use to create a base map when I teach you how to build your map, the basic rules. And what you are going to do is the next thing, guys. On here, from your spawn, that is going to be this area around here, you are going to start just by open the menu, the normal menu in creative, and you are going to have this, that is signpost public, okay? What is going to do this one? This is going to provide a way to our mobs to move around the area. So what their mobs are going to do, they are going to follow the path, okay? How you can set up this one, okay? And just to show you, I'm going to delete this part so you will be able to see the same setup that I have in my game. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is that you, or you need to understand is that the mob is going to follow where a design is pointing, okay? So if you hit the pan, you put the sign in this way, the mob is going to move in that way. If you put the, mo the sign on this way, you're, the mob is going to move in this way, okay? Also for the sides, you can choose like um, intersections or you can use like rect angles, okay? So what you need to do is so you have to create a path. For this, just place the signs in the floor with the right direction all the paths, okay? Why is important all the paths? Because sometimes some mobs can get some errors. So be sure that they are going to follow the same path, okay? So if you see here, I create in a path. But very important, guys, when your mobs needs to turn, what you have to do is you cannot do this and then add to this. Why? Because this specific sign is going to tell the mobs to move this area. They are going to move around this area. Be sure that when you have to turn, the previous sign is pointing to the one that is having the right direction. So as you see, this one points to the one that have the right direction. And you, what you have to do is just follow all the paths right here to the end of your map. Okay, guys? On here, once again, don't do this because the mob is going to move to this area. What you need to do is to put the, the sign in the right way, okay? So never do this also because the mob is going to return. Just remember, you need to do this, okay? Very important, guys. 
probably by mistake, you can click on the same sign. Don't do that. Be sure that because, well, as an example, again, this mob is going to move to this area if the sign is like this. Okay. So just be sure that the sign is on this area. And if you get some mistakes, guys, be sure to fill that area with another sign like this. Okay, as you see, also if the mob gets out of the way in that in this corner, you will be able to do this, okay? And very important, guys, this is going to be for the size of map. Probably in your map, you are going to have more different alike signs. So if you get more sites like at the sites, what you have to do is just fill this like this. So with this, you are going to be sure that your mob is always going to go to the center. Like you see right here, everything is pointing to the center. So if your mobs are like this, even if they are on this way, they are going to move this way and they are going to find this sign and they are going to, to just follow the path. Okay, guys? So what you have to do is you have to fill your map. If you get some errors, just use the signs to redirect the, the mobs like, like this one. You can do this to be sure that the mobs are going to be always in the right direction. Like this, you can do like this. Remember, this one was failing. This one needs to be pointing here. And with this, you will be able to actually make your mobs move in the right way, okay? So as you see, those, don't worry, those signs are not going to be seen in, in play mode. They are going to disappear because so this is like just like a system item. And with that, you are going to assure that your mobs are going to move by the right way, okay, guys? This is like the first requirement. Now we are going to create a second requirement, okay? So remember, we have two requirements. The first one is to create the path. As you see here, I already have the path by all the way to until the end. Right, guys? Now, what you're going to do is that you are going to create an area, okay? Um, Diogo, I didn't understand your question. Um, I, I didn't understand your question because I didn't speak like uh, Portuguese. Oh, no. What happened is that probably you're coming from Nanda. Uh, Nanda used the same color because she creates two mobs. As in my game, you have two different teams and the mobs are never going to find each other. Uh, the mobs are just going to move in their independent way. You don't need to have the same color, okay? Why? Because our mobs doesn't have any team, okay? We are using the same teams or the same mobs for both teams, so the team is going to be no one, so you can use this one. If you place actually a team mob, you need to use the right team. But remember this, guys, as this specific block has also some colors like uh, Diogo mentioned in the comments, like this one, let me check this. You have like different colors. Yeah, what happened is that if you have a red mob, it can take any of those two, okay? So if you have a red mob, the mob is going to use whatever, if you have this one or if you have the red. But the blue mob, if you place a blue mob here, is only going to take the neutral, okay? So it's this work also for just normal mobs and no mobs with team. But this one specifically only works for team for mobs in the red team, okay? Just to let you know, but you don't need to place a color one, okay? Now, moving back, now what you need to do is that you create a two different areas, okay? What are going to be the areas that we are going to create? The first one, it's going to be, remember to switch to the area system, just hit on here. And with the letter B or with this icon, you are going to see the areas. The first one is going to be called red spawn. That is going to be this area that you are going to find here. And what it's going to do this area is the area where you are going to create the mobs. Two cool things that you need to be sure about. First, the area needs to be or needs to have at least two blocks from distance from the walls. That's very important. The walls needs to be at max at minimum, sorry, two blocks. Because if you place an area that is going to be very close to the borders, to the walls, your mobs can spawn outside your map, okay? 
So always be sure that your uh, like that this area is going to to have at least two blocks of distance for each wall. Okay. Once you create the area for the red team, rename it. I already give the name as a red spawn, and also I create a blue spawn. What is going to do the blue blue spawn is going to just be the same, but for the blue team. Okay. Now that you have created all of those. What we are going to do is that we are going to switch back on developer tools to triggers and we're going to start creating the triggers for the invocation of the moves. OK, so here I'm going to change the name. So it's going to be baby boomer explosion. All right. And OK, I have also here one. What is this one? Oh, this was something that it doesn't have anything to do. But yeah, this is the baby boomer actually. All right, guys. So what you are going to do, guys, and let me switch to the presentation one second. Now, yes, you are seeing my screen. So we are going to start creating those player sets that you already create in the last class. What we are going to do is improve it, okay? So remember, we create a two different here, uh, two different uh, like triggers. The first one is was the red team initial trigger, and the second one is the blue one. Okay, remember you need to set up if you forget that part to to set up two two different events. The first one runs when any player enters the game. The second one is when any player responds. And what you are going to do is to be sure that that player is from the blue team or the red team, depending on your script. And what you are going to do is to set up three variables. First one, it's called um, tower check, if I'm not wrong. Yes, check tower. That is going to be the kind of tower at the beginning that the player can place. The second one is the tower block. That is where the players can place the block. And finally, we have that one that is going to be the area. So what you have to do is that you have to add to this one another action that says assigned, that assigns an area. So the area is going to be here. And the area that you are going to use is first, you need to select a function, private variable, and select the name of the variable. Okay, so remember that we create an area uh, that says um, that exactly, that says um, the red spawn. Okay, so what you are going to do is uh, the private variable that says red spawn, you are going to set it up. Okay, on here, it's why it's not allowing me to do it. Okay, yeah, sorry. Spawn minion, that's going to be the name. I forgot that. So the spawn minion here, that's correct. The name is going to be spawn minion. Needs to be set up as the area that you just created. Okay, so you are going to choose the area and you're going to select red spawn for the red team and blue spawn for the other team. Okay, now that we have those triggers created, that we have like um, the different triggers on this area, okay? That is going to be the yeah, just like the like the trigger that we create the last class. Just add the part about the area here. Spawn minion, just like you see in the presentation. Now we are going to start creating here. And let me switch to the presentation again. All right. So here we are going to create the buy minion system. Okay, and how it works? We don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to be very quickly with this. We need to create three triggers. Oh well. Of course, we need to create only two. That depends on how many minions. So you are going to create one that is the base system that creates everything else. Why? Right. And once you have that base system created, you are going to start creating the minion waves. So you can have a lot of minion waves. What they are going to do is just to set up the variable, those two variables, to execute this specific trigger. Okay. So how it's going to work, what it's going to do, is that that specific trigger is not going to have like that much conditions. It's going to have just like simple conditions here. But also this specific trigger uh, is going to to place like the literally the, the minion system. OK, so let's move to mini world and let's start to create this. OK, so the first trigger that I mentioned is to get minions on. Get minions on means that the minions are going to be created on the enemy team. And we are going to create a, this trigger from zero. Okay, so just create a new trigger set. Okay, okay, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm creating more triggers than the ones that I need. Sorry for that. 
Ignore that, so just select and create a new trigger set. You are going to rename it as attack mobs. Once you are in there, you are going to create a new trigger for that uh, trigger set. Okay, I'm going to just move it. So it's going to be easier for me to navigate into the one that I want to show you. Okay, I know that the mini world should implement a better system to, to move around this area, but don't worry guys. Okay, yeah, just right here. As you see here, we are going to start from zero, okay? So rename it, you are going to then rename it as a get minion zone. Of course, I already have it, so I'm going to get a different name on two, because I were going to just disabilitate uh, this, okay? So what is going to do this trigger, guys? What we are going to do is just to execute this trigger. So this trigger doesn't need conditions, doesn't need to have anything about events, as you see here. We don't have any condition, we don't have any event, okay? So first, we are going to do the next thing. We are going to measure how many items the player get. Why? Because remember, in our system, the player can get us an example, 15 mobs, okay? So that's why we have here in the presentation a variable that is being called minion amount. What we are going to set is that that's, uh, that's, uh, that variable. And that variable is going to be equals to the number of minions that the player gets. And how we are going to do that, how we are going to create that, okay? And that's actually very easy, guys. Let me show you in MiniWord again. What you are going to do is to add a new event or a new action, sorry. In the action, you are going to select assign, guys, okay? In assign, you are going to select value setup. Remember, this is a private variable. So for create a private variable, you have to hit here where it says function livery. You are going to select team and in team, you are going to select player livery, okay? It's going to give you this new screen. You are going to select private variable. And in private variable, you are going to create a new variable in value that is going to be named as a minion amount. I already have it here created, so you are going to select that one. And you have the first part. Now, for the number, you are going to hit here in the number zero. You are going to select function livery. And I'm not sure. Yes, it's this one. And you are going to select items and items in player backpack. Okay, no, and it's not this one. Let me check. Okay, it's this one, number of items on it. So when you hit that, it's going to detect how many items of the exact same or exact number of items from a specific type is having this player. So you are going to select in item type, you are going to select template library. And sorry, you, know what? you are going to select item in, in, in type event, okay? Just let me confirm, yes. As you see, we create the same one here. Yes, it's the same one. So, uh, what is going to, to do this, it's going to actually um, just um, count the amount of items that the player just get. Why? Because we are going to create the exact same of numbers of the minions, okay? Now, what we are going to do is, of course, delete those items, okay? Why? Because those items doesn't need to have anything. So you are going to select player as an action and you are going to do another one that says remove item, okay? So when you select remove item, you are going to select a uh, uh, player's in trigger event. In item type, you are going to select item type in event that's going to detect the same item that the player gets. But very important here, in value, you are going to select function library. You are going to select players, players private variable. And in private variable, we are going to select the amount. Remember that we set up the amount just some seconds ago. So we are, we are going to select that one, okay? Now, the next part, the next step is going to be to create the amount of creatures that we have in the enemy attack, okay? In the teams that belongs. So it's very easy, guys. For create this, you are going to hit here in add a new action. You are going to select creature and you are going to select create creature, okay? So you are going to have this one. You are going to have all this information. So remember, first, we need to set up the amount. For this, we create a variable, so just select a function, then you are going to select private variable and you are going to select minion amount, the minion amount that we set up before. The creature type, it needs to be set up here. 
as a new variable that we just have in our presentation here that we are going to set up later. So moving back to structure, we have here a new variable that is going to be minion check. Minion check is going to save the information about the minion that we are going to create. And what we are going to do when we create a new trigger for each minion, we are going to set up that variable, okay? So for now, in game, you're going to go to mini words again, and where it says value, again, you're going to, to, to do the same. So we're going to create the minion amount in variables. So probably you're not going to have this one. Just hit create variable and give the name minion check, okay? Uh, sorry, on here in creature type, you are going to select function library, creature, sorry, plier, you are going to select plier private variable, and plier private variable, you are going to create a new variable that is going to be minion check, okay? Remember, just hit here, on here, you are going to create the name of the variable and select minion check. Now, if in the event position, we need to set up also this. For this, we are going to use function library, okay, we are going to select plier, plier private variable, and of course, over here, you are not going to have any variable because we didn't set up yet that. What you can do is just select the next thing. You are going to select here, function library. On there, you are going to have like different options here. There is one that says central area of location or random location in area, okay? You can choose whatever you want. Um, it's going to be easiest to choose just random area. Okay, and in the area, you are going to choose again function library. Then you are going to go to plier. Remember, always to select a private variable, you need to select the plier one. On private variable, select the one that says spawn minion. Remember, the spawn minion saves the area where the plier is going to be created. Well, we have the area, we have the creature, and we have also the amount. Now we need to select a team. So we should not need to create like different scripts or different uh, triggers for each team, you are going to use only the one, the same one. So what you are going to do here is that you are going to select in options, or sorry, in function library, you are going to select plier and you are going to select pliers team. And in pliers, be sure that you choose pliers in trigger event. And that's it. Now we have like set up the amount, deleting the, the icons and creating the creature. All that comes after that is just information and uh, literally like um, information for the player, okay? So what I always do for you guys, you don't need to do that, but it's important to show the player that he creates this. So what I always do guys is to create three things, always, always that you create something for the players, let the players know that they are taking effect. So first, I show a text message, like the text that appears in the half of the screen that says summon success. Second, I get a light effect on it, like literally a special effect on it. Then um, I show a, like a sound for them, um, like, you know, um, for the players to notice that they actually get its minions. And finally, I set a message in the chat. So you have to do the same, okay? You actually, you don't need it, but it's something that is going to look more professional your game. So to create in the text, just hit on here, in plier, add a new action. And you need to search here, display plier to text. And uh, display text to plier, sorry. On there it shows the text that says, summon or summon sources. And that's it. All right, guys, of course you are going to put colors. You are going to also, you can place exactly which a mob you connect, but I'm showing you very quickly that information. Second, we are going to do the special effect. So we are going to play a special effect on position. And the type of special effect, you select whatever you want, guys. Again, I'm not going to take that much time to show you this because, you know, uh, we are all, we need to see other things in the class, but yeah, you can take whatever uh, like effect you want, like this one. Event position, just choose event position and the sides one. Also, you can add a special sound effect. For the sound effect, you just select plier, where it's plier, 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 it's around this area. So pliers turn on effect, okay. In the sound effects, set air, select also whatever sound you want it. I recommended the one that says market. So select one that sounds like it's doing something, like this one, as an example and place it. 
And finally, for the chat, that is going to be also important because we need to let the other team know or all the team know that the player gets um, this specific feature. So be sure that you are not going to select player instead of that select player, move, player group. This is going to send the chat to all the player and select this player chat to the player set player set select a function variable or yeah function player player group and all players in team the team is going to be function and player team in player select the players in trigger event okay so remember with this we are going to show only to the same team now the content is going to be the character string just a select in function library connect or string concatenation on here we are going to put function library and we are going to send first the player name so they are going to know how many how many moves they boot in character screen select again function library and string concatenation that allows you to connect some strings on here it says a summon minions on here we are going to set, let the player know the amount so to select the amount just select function library Convert value to string. That means that we are going to convert a number into into letters. And in function in in variable library, we are going to select the amount. So remember, function library player player private variable, and the private variable it's going to be the one that we just create that is minion amount. Okay, and that's it. With that, we have the base to create our minion. Okay. Oh, all right. So checking the comments. All right, I like that you like it, okay? So, very important, guys, we have the face. As you see, this is not difficult, but it's not doing anything. Now, what we need to create is the actual trigger that is going to summon or call this function, okay? How we are going to do that? How we do to actually create this specific feature? So, the system is going to be very easy. First, we need to create some specific parts. Let me show you in detail that. So you are going to see that it's going to be very easy, okay? So you are going to create a new trigger. Remember that we are going to call our, our baby boomer. So on here, we are going to rename it. Remember to put the name and the level, okay? Baby boomer level one, okay? First condition is going to be when the player gets a specific block. So when you add the event on here, you have like different events. You are going to select obtain props. Okay. Now we need to set up the condition. So in item, you are going to select the remind item type. And remember, we create an object, a miss object for this mob. We are going to select that one. So in template library, select custom. And in custom, you are going to select the item. Remember that this item is the one that is going to summon the baby boomer. So select that one. Okay. And now for the events or for the actions, first we are going to select, we are going to set up the variable that we create. Remember that we create a creature variable. So we are going to select creature type setup. Very important, creature type as variable is going to be different to creature. If you select creature, it's not going to work. Okay, so be sure that you select creature type. In creature type, you are going to select function library, plier, and in private variable, you are going to to use the one that we created before, that is minion check. Okay, guys, if you don't have it, just hit on the plus symbol and select here, minion check. Okay, the name that we create for that one, that is minion check. I already have it, so it's around here. Just select that one. And now we are going to set up the creature type. So remember, the object of the baby boomer is going to create the creature baby boomer. So now we need to select the creature. And the creature, the baby boomer creature is right here. So just select baby creature, baby uh, like baby boomer creature. And that's it. Check this. We have the first part. Now, right now is just set up the variable. Now what the trick here is that we are going to execute the trigger that we just created before. Okay. So what you are going to do here is you are going to add a new action where it says trigger. You are going to set operate trigger and the trigger is going to when you select trigger, it's going to allow you to select with trigger. So remember the trigger is going to be get minions on number two. Check the conditions, it needs to be true. Okay, guys, very important. These check conditions need to be true. And now we have our skill, okay? 
Let me show you right now. On here, we are going to change. So remember, we have the, the boomer, the boomer uh, like icon. Now we are going to place instead of that the boomer item, okay? And to show you just the effect, we are going to add like a lot of, of them. We are going to have like different here. So this is going to create 99, this is going to create 50, this is going to create 25, this is going to create true thing, this is create some, and this is going to create two, okay? So let me play the game now to show you what it means. So remember, those mobs are not going to appear here, they are going to appear in my spawn to attack the enemy team. So, as you see here, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to take those of two items. As soon as I have it, the item disappears, and I got the effect and the sound, the chat is saying that. And as you see there, this, the, those minions are going to appear and are going to attack the enemy base, okay? Now, if I get 12 of them, the system is going to detect 12 of them and it's going to send 12 of those minions to attack the enemy base. As you see, we already create the attack system, okay guys? We left 10 minutes, in those 10 minutes we are going to start creating some parts. Um, because we left some specific things, probably I'm going to take 10 minutes more with you guys as always, uh, because we left to create some parts. Let me switch to the presentation, now you are seeing my presentation. And it's uh, that we are going to create now the most power source system. So now the system that left is to create the wave system, okay guys? So right now, as you see here in my game, for those that are new, the system is creating those mobs automatically. You don't have to do anything, they are going to appear by themselves. And as you see, those minions are going to attack the enemy base. That's the system that I'm going to teach you how to do. So this is going to probably to take some time. And I just want to know, guys, if, as an example, you want to take more time, as you see here, and after you hear, our baby boomer is making some explosions on there. And that's actually very cool. I like the effect, check that. But well, coming back to the class, we left 10 minutes, guys. Um, I don't think that I will be show, able to show you this uh, wave uh, system, and the one that is easy to make um, in 10 minutes, but I'm going to do my best, okay? So let's do this. I'm uh, going to take around 10 minutes more, okay? Hello, Julian, welcome. Hello, Min Puk Halen. Hola, I see that you speak also Spanish. So welcome. And yeah, guys, okay? So let me change this. Now I'm going to teach you how to create the, the web system, okay? So moving back to MiniWord. Okay, now let's move back to the presentation, guys. So for this, for this specific system, as you see, we have to create a lot more variables. Don't get over that. Take a screenshot of it, so you will be able to create the variables later. And remember guys, if you miss some part, you always will be able to open this video again and just repeat the parts that you need to learn, okay? So, let me send you an explanation about how this system works. This is going to be basically the system. The system is composed by four different scripts right here, okay? So first we have the wave start, which is going to set up like the waves uh, to, or send the waves uh, as a new wave. It's going to set, this is the wave number one or the wave number two. It's going to have those mobs. It's going to, to do all the job. Then we are going to have a wave loop. A loop in, in programming your coding or in setup scripts is something that repeats over and over and over and over until you complete some condition. That's what is going to create the mobs. Then we have um, actually a web loop too that is going to create the different monsters. So it's going to be very boring to have the same monster. What I did is have two different monsters in the game for each round, okay? Like the normal monster, remember that with the system that we made, you also can summon to attack a normal mobs to the enemy team. But just to let you know that. And then we have the wave break. That is going to be like the time off, the time that you get after completing some levels. That you have like a minute to just reforce your defense to have like a a break, a breath for 
for just improve your defenses and right after that is going to spawn another wave okay so very important guys uh the wave starts is which start the systems and create a wave loop but uh, the wave loop is going to run two different uh, scripts at the end or or triggers first the wave loop two and then the wave break okay if the conditions mean the condition is very simple if there is no more remaining mobs to spawn in this wave it's going to take the break, uh, the time off, and the time off is going to be just under, and it's going to start the wave again, okay? Very important, guys, to make the things easier, as always, we are going to create a trigger that creates all the things, and then we are going to create a set of triggers that are going to, to be actually the minion triggers, okay? So you are going to have only one trigger control everything, and uh, you can just use the, like, the different ways as a setup, okay? So moving to the presentation and to the practice, let's start with MiniWord, okay? So once again, you are going to select Developer Tools. This time, you are going to create a new trigger set, guys, okay? So the trigger set that I set up for this one is called um, Waves, okay? That's the name for that one. Let me change the name for this. Mob Skills, so I'm not going to be confused in the future. Oh, God. I hate when that happens to me that I don't know if I'm using the block modules or not. Okay. All right. So in waves, as always, we are going to create or we are going to start creating the different, uh, the different like, um, like triggers. Okay. So for this, we are going to create first one that is going to have the name of wave start. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new trigger set so you will be able to to see the difference here, okay? I'm going to move this trigger set. So for me, it's going to be easier to move just over waves, okay? I'm going to rename it as a wave two because I'm going to do all the triggers from zero for you. All right. So in waves two, I'm going to have the actual triggers that I'm creating and in waves one, I'm going to have the example. So the first trigger that we are going to create it's going to be the wave start. No, we are going to start by the wave break, okay? And I'm going to show you why. What happened is that the wave break is actually going to be the first trigger that is going to run when your map is created. That is very important, apart from the normal time or usage that you are going to do for that one, you are going to start the map with that because we are going to provide 60 seconds one minute at the beginning for the players to get in position, to think, to read the options, to think about which tower they are going to put and learn the basics of the game, okay? So wait break is going to be this first one and I have it right here, okay? So what is going to be the first one? The event for this one is going to be when the game is created, that is going to be that one, okay? You only have that event, there's no difficult, and apart from that, we are going to have two different conditions here, guys. Okay, so the first condition is that it's going to check a specific variable. If I switch back to the presentation, as you are seeing right now, the first variable or one of the variables that we hear here is one that says remaining mobs, okay? Okay, it's going to be this one, it's going to be a value, okay? And why it's going to be a value? Because we are going to count how many mobs are going to have per wave. Very important, guys, this one, this one is, or most of these specific wave values are going to be global variables. They're going not to be like, um, like um, basic uh, variables, like the other ones that are going to be private, that are going to work per player. These ones are going to work um, just by, by, all the, by, all the, by all the players at the same time, okay? And second, we are going to have a one that says game status playing, okay? This is going to be just a boolean value. So let me go to the mini word again. Um, we are going to start here, okay? So first we are going to add a condition. The condition needs to be a value, okay? So we need to search here, it's math. In math, you are going to select numerical comparison and it's going to have this new screen, okay? In value, you are going to select the first variable, okay? Remember, if you don't have the variable, you need to create it. It's one going to be named it as a remaining mobs, okay? So on there, you are going to select, again, you are going to create a variable. You are going to select, re, okay, 
remaining mobs. Of course, create it. I already have it here and you are going to select that. Okay, game remaining mobs. And we need to be sure that the value it's going to be math in, sorry. You are going to select here and you're going to select input and you are going to place a zero. What does it mean? It means that if we don't have more mobs left remaining to spawn, we are going to execute the break, okay? The second condition that is also important is that we need to be playing the game. What is going to measure the game playing status? Game playing status is going to detect if you are in break or if you are not. So, in that case, the, uh, this break is not going to execute itself a lot of times, it's just the first time, okay? So you are going to hit again on here to add one to find and the actual uh, like uh, Boolean values. You have to hit here when it says tool and you are going to see one that says Boolean comparison. You are going to select the Boolean value and on here you are going to select gameplay status. What you are going to do, if you don't have it, you are going to create it once more. You are going to say like game status playing okay and what is a boolean value a boolean value it's like a conditional that only have two options if it's on or is off on means that it's playing off means that it's not playing so very important guys and this is very important for this one you need to place default values on on okay so the initial value the initial value for this specific um, variable it's going to be on okay so hit on, of course, I already have it. So um, I just place the name different for me to be able to detect which one is one, but I already have it and it's going to be game status variable, okay? Game status playing. Of course, I going to delete that later and it needs to be yes. On here, you are going to hit the options and you are going to say true, okay? False, sorry. You are going to select false or true, sorry, true. Yeah, that's correct. You are going to select true. Okay, and anyway, let me delete the old one, the one that is not going to work. So I'm not going to have like more variables. Remember this game status playing, as you see here, also this initial value it's on, okay? So our system, it's going to detect basically if uh, this value it's on or off, okay? So let me switch to the presentation back, okay? So, as you see here, we have other, other variables to create. One another that is going to be important is going to be the timer, okay? Because I'm going to explain what it's going to do. This trigger, what it's going to detect is just tell us, send a message to the players and start the timer. When this timer ends, star wave is going to start, okay? So, what we are going to do right now on mini words, let me switch to mini word again. Yes, you are in mini word now. On mini word, you are going to add an action. And the first thing that we are going to do is to turn off the gameplay, okay? So remember, we have a volume value. So we are going to turn off the game status playing. We are going to turn it as an off. So that means that this trigger is only going to execute one time because as we set up this as false, if get executed again, this is going to not work. It's not going to work because this is already off, okay? Now, what will be the next step? we are going to send a message to the players. So in the chat, we are going to hit here in player group and display text to a group, okay? The player set, you are going to select functions and you are going to select player group, all players. That means that all players are going to receive the message. And in input, we are going to do the two things. We are, sorry, in here, we are going to use screen concatenation, okay? And we are going to put here wave or let's do it like this. Instead of that, in the first one, you are going to select function library. You are going to select value and you are going to create a new variable. Okay. In variables, you are going to select create game round. Again, just hit here, create game round and hit create it. Okay. As I already have it created, you're going to select just game round. Game round is going to measure in which round are we currently, okay? So we are going to know which round we are right now. And on here in input, we are going to select inputs. We are going to do a space 
to separate that. And we are going to place has in color wave in color green wave has finished. Now in yellow, let's select yeah in green again. Rains force. your defenses okay so what is going to do this is going just to tell the number of the wave that we have and also it's going to tell the pliers oh i made a mistake here so i placed our nar here all right reinforce your defenses and it's going to tell the pliers to reinforce the defenses that's it actually it's just information but this is the most important one to continue with the system guys you are going to hit here in, oh, okay, yes. Okay, so we already tell that. If you see here, we are going to operate a uh, timer, so we need to create that, okay? To operate a timer, we need to hit on here, timer, and we are going to have different options. Run timer is going to run the timer from one to the number you, whatever you want. So as an example, you can count the days pass or everything. And countdown is going to have a number like 30 seconds and it's going to start reducing the time until it gets on zero. So we are going to use that. We are going to hit here, operate a timer. The timer, it's going to have a cooldown. So timer, you select variable and you are going to create a new trigger that says off time, okay? Off time, it's going to have a, it's the timer. So on here, if you don't have it, you are going to create a variable. It's going to say off time and just hit on confirm. I already have it. So I already going to place that one. The cooldown is going to be the time that you are going to take off. My best advice is to keep 60 seconds. That's the time that the pliers are going to have to start building the defenses, but you can choose whatever time you want. And in repeat, be sure it's in false, okay? So with this, we already create the base, uh, of course, but we need to left two things more, okay? First, we need the timer is running, but we are not showing the pliers the time to the next wave. So to show the pliers that, just hit on add a new one, and in timer, it's different the timer and the display panel. So the display timer uh, panel, it's going to be like the information in the tops that shows to the player that the, the timer is going to expire. So select timer, select variable. In variable, you are going to select off time. Plier set, as always, we are going to show to all pliers. So select functions, uh, pliers, and all pliers. And finally, the string is going to be, again, string concatenation. So we are going to select, uh, sorry, here we are going to select function, a string concatenation. Character string, we are going to select on here the number of the wave. Or let's do this, don't come over complicate here. We are going just to put next wave starts or next wave, okay? Don't worry. Select less amount of text. We are going to place this. Also, we are going to give a color green to this one. But we are going to place an end, okay? So if you don't want anything else be colored by green, just hit a um, this specific symbol that is going to be pound or hashtag, and the letter N in lowercase, give us the space to it, and that's it. It's going to have the color just for that part. The numbers are going to be in white. Just to let the player know that the next wait is going to start, just hit here on, <coughs> sorry, on this one, you are going to create here an option that says um create a special effect so the special effect is going to be the sound sorry let's select a sound the sound is going to be for all the pliers so in you are going to select instead of plier you are going to select plier group we are going to select this the pliers again select function plier group and all pliers the sound effect just template library and on here we have like different sounds about the like the like the system so we are going to choose one that sounds like you have win all right so select that one that looks like you have win the round and that's it we have our first a uh, trigger okay now uh, we left five minutes more to the class, so I'm going to show you another trigger that is going to be 
the wave started, okay guys? So how it's going to work the wave start? The wave start is going to control which is going to be the wave so that is going to be this one, okay? What is that is first hides and stops the, the previous counter that we left. Then it's going to change the game round. It's going to show to the player that the round has been started. It's going to make a sound. It's going to start operate the different waves. And finally, it's going to start uh, like, the, like the wave loop, okay? So what we have to do for this one is to create a new one, okay? So this one is going to be only executed when the time is zero. So let me show you in mini word how you are going to do that. You are going to create a new one. You are going to rename it and the name you are going to place wave start. Okay, guys, I know this is a little bit large and complicated, but you are going to have all the information. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I see that you're talking about milk in the comments. That's very nice. All right, so guys, for this, you don't have to place an actual event here. As you see, those only place here whenever a time or a, like, yes, a timer ends. So for playing this, you have to play on game logic. On here, you are going to hit time, timer change. Now, in conditions, you are going to add mat. Oh, let me check here. Yes, I think it's mat. On here, on here, you are going to use numerical comparison. In numerical comparison, you are going to use function library. Then uh, you are going to select timer time. And on timer time, you need to select the timer that we create, that is of time. And if timer time is equals to zero, that means that there is no more time remaining on that one. That's going to be the first part. Yes. And very important, guys. Another important thing is that the game status needs to be off. It needs to be completely off. So for this, again, we are going to check a Boolean comparison. For that, you need to select Tools, Boolean comparison. And in Boolean comparison, guys, you are going to select the game status playing. And the value needs to be false. OK, guys? That's very important. When the value is false, we can start creating the wave, okay? So, as always, this wave is going to have some specific like features. Just like we did with the game break, the first condition is to change the game status, okay? So, with that, we are going to avoid that the game status is going to execute over and over, okay? That is to just, we are going to limit that. So, hit here on variable, you are going to select game status playing. Remember, we are assigning a Boolean one. Remember, assign Boolean. And we are going to select here as true. OK, that means that this is going to start the system. Now, we already create that. The second thing that we are going to do is that we are going to stop the timer and we are going to turn off everything. So to stop the timer that we create, that is the cooldown, we are going to hit on timer and stop timer. The timer, as always, is going to be the off time. OK. Let me take some water, guys. Mm. Mm. All right, guys. So now that we stop the time, we need to hide the timer. OK, we don't want the players to stop. They still have the timer. All right. So now we are going to to just hide the timer panel. Once again, uh, we are going to select this and let me do this just a second. All right, and now we are going to select a spam timer and we are going to hide for all pliers. Okay, guys. So once again, we are hiding this for all the pliers. Now we have to set up a couple of things. So first, now uh, we already hide everything and we set up the basics. Now we are going to add a new feature. And what we are going to do is that we are going to increase the time round. Okay, so remember, we are going to start with the round zero and we are going to increase the different rounds, which wave is going to change. So for that, select value setup. In value setup, we are going to select variables. We are going to create one, or if you already have it, because we are already created, we are going to select game round. That is the one that we create. And we are going to set up like this. We are going to use 
uh, functions, we are going to do a numerical comparison. We are going to select again the variable that is going to be game round. And we are going to be sure that is in add, and we are going to add one number to that one, okay? That means that the round is going to increase by one, okay? Now, very important, guys, you, and I'm not going to show this because I, you already know how to do it, but you are going to add a chat for all the players showing that the new wave has been increased. You are going to make a sound, okay? That is very important, guys. Uh, you will need to, to do that to let the players know. But the most important thing that we are going to do is that we are going to do the next thing, okay? We have until this point the wave start, okay? You are going to stop right now. We are going to continue with this one later. What you are going to do on this one, okay? Oh, sorry. In here, where it says uh, height, you are going to select off time, okay? That's going to be different, okay? But now we are going to create our first wave uh, script, okay? So select one. You are going to rename it as a wave one, okay? As I, as I already have some waves, I don't going to change this. And what we are going to do is that we are going to execute with this one. We are going to execute in wave start. We are going to execute that wave, okay? So what you are going to do is just to hit here on trigger, operate trigger. And for operate trigger, what you are going to do is that you are going to actually execute that one, okay? The wave one. Remember, a, you are going to do this for each one of the waves that you are going to have. And what you are going to have for each wave is very simple, okay, guys? So first, you need to set up here in the condition. Don't, don't do any event for the wave, okay? Just, you are going to select just the condition, and in the condition, you are going to select that the, the variable that is going to be a math calculation, that the variable that is called as a game round, that is your actual round, is the wave that you are going to create. So, if the game round or the wave is the number one, the action is going to be that we are going to set up some variables, guys, okay? So first, we are going to set up an, a value variable assigned here that is going to be the value, okay? The value, it's going to create a new variable, okay, guys? The variable that we are going to use for this one is, um, first, we are going to set up remaining mobs, okay? So remember, guys, create a new variable that is called remaining mobs. You are, we already created. So if you don't have it, remember that for all the class we see this. And yeah, now for the game reminding mobs, you are going to select this one as the amount of mobs that are going to spawn on this wave. So as an example, for mine is going to be 50 mobs. Now, what we are going to do apart from this, we are going to set up two different variables, guys. So remember, in our system, we are going to have two different mobs, mobs one and mobs number two, okay? So we are going to add a new one, we are going to assign, and this time we are going to assign a creature type, okay, guys? Very important, not creature, just creature type setup. The name of the variable that we are going to create is round monster, okay? Round monster is the monster that spawns by default, and round monster two has some chances to spawn, okay? So the main monster of this round is going to be here, select game round monster and in creature type select your mob okay whatever mob you want it remember that we create this one the baby boomer so we are going to select the baby boomer and very important guys if you want to have a second a like yeah a like a second uh, mob here you can select this too okay let me move this one a little bit because each time that you copy something it's going to move everything and you are going to select again or create the same or copy that a specific action. And on here, you are going to create another variable that is going to be round monster two. And you are going to select here another mob, okay? The second monster that is going to spawn in your wave. Let's select whatever monster you have. And finally, we have our wave completely finished. Okay, here. So as you see, with all these uh, wave icons or with this wave um, like uh, just simple waves are going to be very simple. Remember, if you want to make the 
the wave number two, just copy and paste, change the name for it as always. On here, once more, you have to place the number of the wave. Very important, guys. In the condition, always place the number of the mob. You can set up this like whatever you want it, okay? So you can change the monster, whatever you want, you can change it from here, okay? So the baby boomer number two, baby boomer number three. But very important, guys, if you add a different wave, you have to go back here. You have to go to wave start. And on here, you also need to add this wave again, okay? So let me show you here if I can move this very quickly. All right, so yes, you copy again this trigger here, and this time you need to execute the trigger that you just create for the other wave, okay? So at the end, I'm going to show you my other wave, the one that I already finished here. So in my wave start, as you see, it's the same triggers here, but I have all my waves, okay? So you have to all, all the waves on there. Once you finish adding the waves here, okay? Imagine that you have 30 waves, you are going to add the 30 waves here. You are going to add a new action after you add all the waves and you are going to assign a new tip type of creature. So you are going to select again creature type set. This time we are going to select, uh, select the next round creature, okay? And the next one, uh, for this one, you are going to create another creature variable that is going to be named as a game uh, game. Um, uh, yeah, this one is going to be game next month. What it's going to do is to set up the next month that is going to be spawned. Just select confirm. Okay. So remember, I already have it created here, but this game next month, and the creature type is going to be. Select it on here. You are going to choose a variable and it's going to be around monster, okay? Very important, guys. You are going to select gain monster on here. And finally, at the end, what you are going to do after you do all these things, it's just to start a timer, okay, guys? And that's where our system is going to detect the waves. In uh, Okay, so the, what we are going to do again here is we are after we have all the weights added here. We are going to go here. We are going to go to timer and we are going to cool down a timer. Okay. The timer, you need to create a new timer that is going to be spawn timer. That is going to be the name once again. So select here add and select the name spawn timer. I already have it created. So I'm going to select down. We are going to select as a cooldown time, two seconds. And very important, guys, on here, you need to select repeat and it's going to be true. OK. And that's it. We already finished creating this specific wave. OK, so. Oh, sorry, very, very important clarification, guys, and I want to be sure here on here, you need to choose false. OK, when it says repeat false. OK, so guys, until the point, I think we already take more of the time that we need. Or of course, we already have 20 minutes more. So in this, uh, I'm going to keep this like for the next class that we are going to learn how to do the last one. That is going to be the loop that creates the mobs. OK, why? Because we already take 20 minutes more of the class and I don't want you to, to be a little bit um, tired of it. So guys, for those that are just arriving, like Artin, welcome, Le welcome um, also Ho Hang, Nang, uh, welcome all of you guys, uh, welcome Boo. So yes, you are late, don't worry, check the loops. But remember guys, for this class, we left only a couple of things here, okay? So we are going to start the last class doing our wave loop system, okay? Or actually, let me check. Oh, no. If you are available to stay with me a couple of minutes more, we can finish now or you prefer to finish this on the next class. I think we are going to take the time for the next class because it's going to be very large. But you, what you have right now is the system to start. OK, so your, your mobs now are not going to spawn, but you have the base system to start the wave. For those that are in Discord, probably I will be able to, to send you screenshots of the next part of the script. But for now, we have like this uh, system uh, created, okay? So 
on this point the class has been already finished guys for now i don't want you to to get too tired because are we already take two hours and a half so at this point guys in the comments i just want to know if you have any questions well we have the question section i'm going to change this and i mentioned right here that actually uh kenzie told me that he has new changes on his game so i want to try that let's check this i am good trigger that's correct you are good on triggers you make sure that you do some changes in your map i want to play with you guys i see our team that's that's cool all right so uh el sugar Sh short guard hd so it's very hard to pronounce some of your names guys i'm really good at english but some of your names are a little bit complicated it's so guys um for those that want to play with me we can play together i'm going to create a room so we can take a look to the kansas map remember guys if you want to let me your maps to test in the next classes just access to the discord team um the discord group is going to be just right here in the comments just uh enter to the discord team and, and tell me that you want to play a specific game in the next class and i will be able to to play with you guys so let's do this i'm going to create a room <laughs> i see so yeah uh, just to let you know el sugar uh, for the previous videos, I, I just left um, how to create all the system. Let's do this. As six classes already finished, subscribe to the channel and I'm going to submit a short video before the next class about how to create a day, the wave. I'm going to submit it around, I think it's going to be on Wednesday. On the next Wednesday, you are going to have that video, so you are not going to wait that long uh, because I know that we left that part, but that part is going to take another 20 minutes, so I don't want to make you wait that long, okay? All right, our team. So welcome. Access to this room, guys. Remember, their room is going to be 27. It's just in the top right here. You are going to see some letters. It's around this area. Well, <laughs> you are going to see it uh, just in the video, some uh, letters in the top. That says join to the waiting room and also has like um, the UID that is going to be 27.69.323. Uh, so join to the room and we are going to play together the, uh, this Kenzie room, okay? All right, so as you see here, we have also the wave number. On here we have some towers, so you can get the towers from Kenzie here. Let's do this. Let's get... Oh, actually I don't have any money, but yeah, that is the map from Kenzie. If I, if I don't remember wrong, the zombies are going to spawn from here. So what I'm going to do is to put the towers here. Alright. As you see, Kenzie is very good making some miniatures. And I really like that. Of course, this is going to be a little bit different. Oh, of course, I can pick up the towers. Hello, Binsel, welcome. Okay, guys, be, be very careful because zombies can attack here. Okay, welcome Kaka, welcome Teuton. All right, so what we have here and why I'm dying? Oh, because you are killing me, huh? All right, Oi, how are you, Juegos? A gamer. All right, guys. Oh, 
Oh, that's a mistake, guys. If you see, the zombies are trying to attack me. So that shouldn't happen in your game. For fixing this, just turn off the active attack and change it to passive attack, okay? To fix this issue. Okay. 49, 48. And as you see, the zombies are spawning here. All right. All right, guys. So. As you see in Kenzie game, also you will be able to to place some um, specific towers here. But for that, you need to get towers in this area, okay? And also you can get some weapons. The only problem I found is that, um, actually sometimes uh, what happens is that the mobs are going to disappear because as you see, some parts of the map are not going to be rendered. And let me show, guys, show you guys, if you are here, your towers are going to disappear because there is no player in that area. So you need to be careful with that. Yeah, as so you see, I, I like the idea that the mobs can attack you. Um, but yeah, let me show you guys. So probably the tower that is going to disappear is going to be this one, okay? So let's place this tower here. If there is no enough players here for during that time, Okay, probably it's not going to happen because there are some flyers there. But as you see, there is some part of the map that is not rendered. So avoid that, guys, because when that happens, your mobs are going to disappear from time to time. Let's check this. And that, that's going to ruin your game, okay? So this tower doesn't disappear because there is a flyer in that area. But if there wouldn't like any flyer in 32 blocks around, it can disappear. So. Be sure that you 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 actually don't make a big a big 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 map. Be sure that it's going to have um, at max sixty blocks uh, on each side. Okay. All right, guys. Let's see what I can do, how I can get the powerful towers. Okay, I think I got it. Let's put the biggest tower here. Oh, 
no, I still not have it. I, I don't. Oh, okay, we lost. All right, guys. So if you want to follow Kenzie, Kenzie is playing a like in the comments, all the information, so to follow him and to be able to play with him. Now I'm going to create another map for you and I be able to play, guys. I think it's going to be also very funny to play in that man. Okay, I wasn't able to exit. So that happens sometimes with Word, guys. Be sure that you will be able to exit. But don't worry, I'm going to create another room. So you will be able to play with me, guys. Again, my UAD is in the top. Let's see what other game we can create. Hmm. Okay, let's do some wizard stadium here. Let's say for 20 players, so you will be able to join. And I'm going to create a this room right here. Remember, you will be able to access with my UID. Okay, guys, so you will be able to play it here, just access. I'm going to invite you guys uh, for those that are already inside here. Hello, sensible. Just let me know when the map is completely loaded. Hello, Sahala. Saldanha. Very good. For, very hard for me to pronounce your names, guys, in other languages. Uh, Saldanha. Saldanha, right? Yeah. Oi. Welcome, Vincel. Uh, hello, Quill. Yeah. All right. So let me know when the map loads. I just want to be sure that you will be able to play. When you will be able to move. And yeah, I see that most of you already are able to move. So let's play. All right. So I'm going to do a, a combo breaker. For this, I always do my cage. I get some heal and I do some Fritz combo. All right, so in this game, you have to craft your skills and you have to kill all your flyers. Okay, so to get some coins, to get some extra power. I'm going to do something and it's like going to change to near. Yes, I'm already near. Now let me do something here. Going to change this to that side and Probably you are going to see a lot of things in my screen, but it's just like I'm going to turn off one of my monitors. To see if the speed goes a little bit better. Yes, of course I have new items. I will have something to protect myself. Okay, I have a water chakra here. So remember guys, with the books, uh, the books that you have in your hand or the books that are in the, in the map, you will be able to craft more skills. The skills are going to depend on which items did you have, if each hands. Oh. All right.
Okay. Oh, that's very hard to kill. All right, I think I already killed him. All right, let's see. I see a fire attack from here. I'm not going to let you go, so you cannot exit from here. All right, very good. I'm going to exit from here. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to take my reward. I see, guys, that you most of you already have in some lag. So let's do this, guys. To be able to play a little bit better, I'm going to to actually end the the life so you we will be able to play together better okay guys for now that will be it guys remember that the class is already over and the next class is going to be the next sunday and the next saturday 6 p.m or in uh, vietnam time that is south s asia and yeah guys remember that you can join to this room whatever time you want it i'm here to play with you guys okay thank you so much for your time and see you later